kilowatt, three horsepower, hooked up to this Ron Larmon double A series. Engine lathe, easy to program, no problems. Looks weird to display in the video, but live, there's no blinkies. The Ron Larmon double A series popping off at full blast. From the street, you got the ground bare wire and the two hot wires, the black and the white. So you got your 110, 110, which equals 220, obviously. Then over here, you got your V, U, W cables and the ground that are going right over here. So the power's going in, coming out through those wires to the motor. Beautiful little setup and it works great so far. It's been running for almost an hour straight. I'm testing it. There's the breaker right there. 30 amp breaker, 220 volts. So everything's legit set up here. This box is an old 60 volt, I'm sorry, 600 volt, 60 amp safety switch turned into a VFD box now. Over here we're going to get the on off switch and the potentiometer hooked up but for right now we're just using the one on the VFD. Works just fine. Here's the instructions. They're not too elaborate but they're not the worst I've seen. This is the one for the AT1 setup here. Delta setup. Delta connection. So you got your white and black cables here coming from the street with the ground then coming out are your W, Y, I'm sorry, your W, V, and U cables, plus your ground. You have lots of cool little connections here, but the basic ones are down below over here. Your two hot wires, the black and the white, are your 110s equaling 220 volts, plus the bare copper ground, and the red is the ground from the motor. There's the wires also from the motor. The black the yellow and the green are the W, V, and U wires, and those obviously are the three-phase wires. Once you get those hooked up, sometimes you get them crossed. It's no big deal, like we had ours crossed. The black was here, and the green was here. We just switched them, because we had forward and reverse switched. Switched them around, and boom, forward is forward now, and reverse is reverse. JC is about to do the very first test on the machine. A 14 TPI test here on the B selector switch of the quick change gearbox with 14 TPI selected. So are we gonna get 14 thread per inch? We'll see. Height, but yeah, yeah. Exactly. 14 TPIs, huh? Yes. So she's doing what she needs to be doing. Yes. She's just threading.
here's the sensor for the tack that's coming up over here, these two wires. And they're doing um, 12 volt and a comm. Then over here, the two wires here is for the on off switch. The blue wire is also a comm with the sensor and then it's on X4 over here. And then last but not least, the potentiometer is the one with three wires. The blue is the comm. The yellow is the signal. That's going to VL1 or VI1. And then of course the five volt positive is the brown one. So it's relatively simple to hook up. And then of course you got your main connections back there. So let's give her a run. Boom, she's on. Potentiometer. signal. The brown wire is the positive which gets hooked up to the 5 volts and this is the, the comm or the ground. Those three are the potentiometer. You got the potentiometer, the tack, and the on off switch. We're all there hooked up. Don't forget to change your parameter when you're hooking those up. frequency. That's when you're changing your potentiometer from the default, which is one, the panel potentiometer. You're going to change it to two, external analog signal. And then P11 is going to be the start stop. P11 is the one you change when you're putting on the on off switch. And default is the panel keyboard. Obviously you want to change it to two, external port. So those are the two ones to change P10 and P11 for the potentiometer and the on off switch. There's the sensor right there for the tack on the spindle. Here's the external on off switch. There's the tack at the spindle and of course the potentiometer. Separate potentiometer from the main panel of course. 